So we are going to talk about line integrals over scalar fields. Line integrals have a lot of applications in pure mathematics. For example, the definition of curl uses the idea of a line integral. In addition to that, there are many real world physical applications of a line integral, such as Ampere's law for magnetic field. With an ordinary integral, we integrate over a one dimensional length. We find the area of some curve that sits on top of that one dimensional length. Line integrals generalize this idea and allows us to integrate with an input curve that exists in multiple dimensions. This becomes very useful when we want to study, for example, the behavior of a particular function on the boundary of some region. In order to understand how these line integrals work, we're going to hop into Math 3D to get a visualization of what is going on. So now we're in math3d.org, which is a great tool for visualizing things in vector calculus. I've left a link in the description. In this case, we're visualizing an ordinary integral. The x range for this integral is the input range, but the output range is actually vertical. We aren't looking at the outputs right now. The inputs go from x equals 0 to x equals 3 for this integral. And the outputs, if we move this, to look at the area, the outputs are represented by this green plane pointing upward. So the ordinary integral is represented by this dark blue area. It's under that surface or that plane in the range that we're moving along the x direction. What we want to consider with line integrals is taking this range that we see is now straight in the x direction and curving it in the other direction of input which is the y direction. This ordinary integral only moves with respect to x. But on the other hand, you can now see a different curve that's marked by this red line, and it's moving in the direction of y equals x squared. But all of that is just the input line. The value of the line integral, just like with the ordinary integral, is the area under this green surface, this plane z equals x. In this case, the height is represented by the exact same thing. It's just the x value. But now we're not just moving in the x direction. We're also moving in the y direction. The value of the line integral is exactly what is the area that is under this particular surface as we move along this curve. So now that we can visualize what a line integral is, we need to think about how to actually compute it. And we're going to do that again by comparing it to an ordinary one-dimensional integral. To start out, when we did ordinary one-dimensional integrals over a particular region, we wanted to find the area under this curve. We started by taking a Riemann sum, which meant that we added up the areas of a bunch of rectangles that exist over the curve. To find the areas of one of these rectangles, we remember that the area of a rectangle is base times height. We know that the base is going to be equal to some value dx, the change in the value of x over the width of that rectangle. And then the height is just going to be the value of the function at a particular value of x in that region. So that gives us the area of a particular rectangle, and then we just have to add these up. So now we need to take our idea of a one-dimensional Riemann sum and extend it to the multi-dimensional case of line integrals. To do that, we can realize that there's actually a way to express this integral as a Riemann sum as well. We can take the areas of rectangles that are steadily rotating as we move along that curve. We just need to find the area of one of those rectangles. Well, just like before, the area is going to be base times height. In this case, the base doesn't just come from a change in the x direction. The base that we're looking for is really the distance that we move along the curve. And one way to express the idea of distance along a curve is arc length. So we describe the width of the base as a change in arc length, ds. And then the height of the curve is just our function evaluated at some point xy within the range of that rectangle. So this is the equivalent area of a rectangle for a Riemann sum when we're doing line integrals. Now we have to take this idea of f of x, y times ds and turn it into something that we're actually able to compute. To do that, we have to start by understanding the curve over which we are integrating. 
let's say that we could describe this curve using some parametrization r of t, some vector valued function that moves along this curve in the xy plane. Once we have that, we can get some information about ds. We know that arc length, ds, could also be described as the change in arc length with respect to our variable t times dt. This ds dt, the change in arc length with respect to time, is another way of talking about speed. How fast we're moving along the curve is the same as how fast the length of that curve is changing. From here, remember that speed is the magnitude of velocity, but velocity for our space curve is just the derivative of position. So we have the magnitude of r prime of t. That's the same thing as speed, which is ds dt. So if we want to find ds, it's going to be the same as the magnitude of r prime of t times dt. And of course, if r prime of t is described by some x and y values with respect to t, we can plug those into our function as well. I've also previously done a video on arc length, so you can check the link in the description for that. With this final derivation of the value of ds, we can actually transform this strange abstract formulation of our line integral into simply an ordinary single integral with respect to some variable t by writing ds as the magnitude of r prime of t times dt. Now that we have this formulation of the line integral, we're going to actually work through an example. Find the area under the surface z equals x over the curve defined by y equals x squared for x between 0 and 2. That's actually exactly the visualization that we have right here. We can see the curve y equals x squared down here on the bottom. In order to do this problem, the first thing we want to do is find some function r of t that we can use to represent our curve over which we integrate. In this case, we know that y equals x squared. So we can define our function r of t to have an x value of t. From there, because y equals x squared, we know the y value has to be t squared. And if x is between 0 and 2, and t is equal to x, then we know that t must also be between 0 and 2 as well. From here, we also need to know r prime of t so that we can find that magnitude. In this case, r prime of t just means we differentiate each of these functions. The derivative of t is 1, and the derivative of t squared is 2t. Then the magnitude of r prime of t is going to be the square root of 1 squared, which is 1, plus 2t squared, which will be 4t squared. And this is actually everything we need to find our integral. The integral over our curve c of f of x y, which in this case is z, times ds, that's going to be the integral with t between 0 and 2 of our function evaluated at the point x, y. Well, in this case, our function is z equals x, and we know that the x value is just t. So we're going to have a t in here, and then the magnitude of r prime, that's going to be the square root of 1 plus 4t squared times dt. And from here, it's just an ordinary integration problem. We could substitute u equals 1 plus 4t squared. We have our t on the outside that we can use as a du. And if we work through this whole problem, we get that the result is 1 12th times 17 to the 3 halves minus 1. And that is an evaluation of a line integral. One more thing I'll go over here is another type of scalar line integral where instead of integrating and having a ds on the end, we have a dy. So rather than considering changes in the arc length as we move along the curve, we're only considering changes in the y direction. This is the exact same problem that we looked at before, but instead of doing the integral of x ds, we're taking the integral of x dy. We can still think about this integral as the limit of a Riemann sum. The heights of the rectangles are going to be the same because we're still moving along the same curve. But the width of the rectangle is no longer described by this arc length. 
Instead, it's only described by changes in y. Therefore, one way that we can consider this area is by thinking about the curve that we have here, what shadow would it cast on the yz plane? So it's almost like we're taking this curve and projecting it so that it's flat on the yz plane. I'll put some visuals on the screen as well so you can see what those shadows look like. To calculate this integral, we can use the same method that we did for the integral with respect to s. Remember that dy can be written as dy dt times dt. How quickly the value of y is changing as t changes times that change in t. And of course, dy dt is also y prime of t. So now we have something that we can plug in for dy in our integral to compute it. Also notice that there's no absolute value around the y prime of t. That's because when we're looking at these shadows, we actually count going backwards as negative, just like we would with an ordinary integral. In this case, we want the integral from 0 to 2 of f of x, y. That's again going to be x, which is equal to t in this case. But now, instead of doing the magnitude of r prime of t, we only need y prime of t, which is that second value in r prime. That's just 2t dt. So this is the integral from 0 to 2 of 2t two squared dt, which ends up being equal to 16 thirds. So that's the value of our line integral with respect to y. So that's how we do line integrals over scalar fields. First, we understand them as a Riemann sum where our input region is more than one dimension. We still have to add up the areas of all these rectangles, but this time, the width of the base is described by ds, a change in arc length. Once we parametrize this curve in the input region as a function with respect to t, we can think about that change in arc length by how fast this curve is changing with respect to t. That's speed times the change in time. And that allows us to express this line integral entirely in terms of an ordinary integral with respect to t.